morning students we are learning water resource engineering and hydrology we are discussing on runoff and hydrographic analysis in the previous lectures we have discussed about the runoff and now we are moving towards hydrographic analysis well for the hydrographic analysis we have to analyze the graphical representation of the particular rainfall for that particular time interval okay so we will start the lecture with the first graphical representation for the rainfall and that is the hydrograph okay what is hydrograph a hydrograph is a graphical representation of the relationship between the rainfall intensity and the time it is a graph of a rainfall intensity that is drawn on the ordinate axis against the time well the intensity of a rain is the rate at which the rain is falling the intensity of a rain is expressed generally in centimeter per hour okay now the rate at which the rain falls that changes continuously throughout the storm hours it may uh, rain there may be a rain of uh, 10 cm in a particular hour that giving an average rainfall rate of 10 cm per hour okay so that would be the rate now however during this particular storm hour sometimes the rainfall rate will greatly exceed 10 cm per hour or sometimes it may less than 10 cm per hour so uh, an idealized curve that is showing the intensity variation with respect to the time that is known as the time intensity pattern or time intensity curve which is shown in the figure and according to that generally it has been assumed to be a made up of straight lines on that particular one hour or two hour interval is generally known as the hydrograph so thus hydrograph is considered in a bar chart or we can say the bar diagram well the area under the hydrograph that will give the total rainfall that occurred in that particular period it is quite convenient to determine the area of hydrograph as it is a kind of bar chart okay that there is no any uneven shape so that's why it's very easy or very convenient to determine the area of that so uh, this chart this bar chart is a very useful in representing the characteristics of the storm a rainfall at a place that can be completely described if its intensity the duration and the frequency are known well the time interval that is chosen for this graph that depends upon the required accuracy and on the storm duration also the storm of a short duration are usually analyzed for an interval of 1 hour or uh, sometimes maybe less but for the storms of longer duration the interval may be taken as a 6 hour or the 12 hours or sometimes more now we will see the construction of hydrograph from a mass curve well this is the mass curve so a hydrograph is generally derived from the mass curve and this hydrograph as we discussed earlier that it represented as a bar chart so from this curvature or from this mass curve how we will construct a hydrograph well a hydrograph is constructed from an average mass rainfall curve of the catchment area well a graph is showing the cumulative depth of rainfall against the time as here mentioned in the figure 
okay now a graph that showing the cumulative depth against the time is plotted in the chronological order and that's why it is known as the rainfall mass curve now to draw the hydrograph from this a convenient time interval is to be chosen and for each of this time interval the corresponding reading of the accumulated rainfall is to be noted from the mass curve then the rainfall intensity for that particular period is to be computed and this value of the intensity are then plotted against the time interval so here the rainfall is in centimeter now if we compute or we can say uh, if we uh, measure the intensity that is per hour okay so that answer would be intensity and then that intensity versus time interval diagram will give you the hydrograph that is as shown in this graph so this is a particular hydrograph okay it is in a bar chart what we did in to plot this graph we just have to convert this cumulative rainfall into the intensity and that we can do by dividing this cumulative rainfall by the time interval okay so this was about the hydrograph now one more graphical representation of the rainfall that is the hydrograph well what is a hydrograph a hydrograph is a graphical plot of discharge of a natural stream or we can say the river okay so the discharge versus time that will give you the hydrograph well it shows variations of discharge with the time at a particular point it also shows the time distribution of total runoff at the point of measurement well discharge is usually expressed in the cubic and time is expressed in the hours okay uh, it may be changes uh, there may be discharge in a hectare hectare into meter per day or there may be time into days uh, into months okay now here the discharge is plotted on the y axis and the corresponding time is plotted on the x axis let me show you the hydrograph this is our hydrograph here you can see in the y axis there is a discharge and in the x axis there is a time interval that is corresponding time we can see where at the beginning of this curve there is only a base flow you can see here this bottom part that is generally known as the base flow okay as per this graphical representation okay so here the groundwater contribution to the stream is indicated at a point okay this one so this point is we can say it is a base flow okay now after the commencement of the rain when the initial losses like the interception and uh, infiltration are met the surface flow begins and there is a progressive increment or progressive increase in the stream flow as here we can see in the figure this is the progressive increment with respect to the time well the hydrograph therefore gradually rises and reaches at its peak value which is over here at d point okay so this point or this peak value is considered as a tp value that is called as the time leg or we can say the basin leg so this peak value can be measured from the centroid of the hydrograph of effective rainfall so therefore the flow in a stream that recedes and hence the hydrograph then declines okay so uh, it's a natural thing that at uh, when rainfall starts with the time it increases there is some peak period when the rainfall uh, is at its maximum value and then after it decreases okay so there's a hydrograph 
that consisting a rising limb that is from A to D and then after a recession limb that is D to C as mentioned in the graph. Well, the discharge at the point D corresponds to the maximum value or the peak flood discharge and the area under the curve that is A, D and C. So, this area would give the volume of total runoff during the flood. Well, a single picked hydrograph developed when there is a single storm. Well, this hydrograph analysis is the most widely used method of analyzing the surface runoff. The rate of discharge from a particular basin varies with the time and that resulting in the hydrograph. Well, this hydrograph also shows some important time factor that is useful in the hydrographic analysis. Okay, the first factor that is the effective duration. Effective duration is the time between which the rainfall rate is more than the infiltration rate. The next important time factor that is the basin lake. Okay, that is TP at point D. So, it is the time between centroid of the net rainfall and the peak value D of the hydrograph. Okay. Next is the recession time. It is the time duration of direct runoff after the end of effective duration of rainfall. Next, that is the time of concentration. Well, it is the time in hours that is taken by the rainwater that falls at the farthest point to reach the outlet of the basin. This is equal to the time between the point of inflection and end of the effective duration of rainfall. So, for this, you must need an effective hydrograph with the same graphical representation. Okay. So, this was about the hydrograph. Now, the next topic that is the separation of base flow. Well, the total runoff comprise direct runoff and the base flow. Yes. So, if you talk about the direct runoff, direct runoff is that water which reaches the river shortly after it falls as a rain. So, that generally known as the direct runoff. It is a kind of overland flow or we can say the surface runoff. Yes. Now, hydrograph which represents directly runoff is called as the direct runoff also. And that hydrograph, that analysis is known as the direct runoff hydrograph. That is shown in the figure here. You can see A, D and E is a direct runoff hydrograph. Okay. This is the area under the hydrograph that gives the direct runoff volume. Okay. Now, if we talk about the base flow, as earlier we discussed that below part is generally known as the base flow and the upper part is about the direct runoff. Base flow is the initial flow of the river before the rainfall comes. So, here we can see at the point, okay, that was the initial point before the rain started. It is sustained or a dry weather flow of the river that resulting from flow of perennial or almost permanent groundwater contribution that reaches to the river. So, this base flow of such river is more or less assumed to be a constant. Well, uh, for the derivation of unit hydrograph, the base flow has to be separated okay, from the total runoff volume. Well, so for that, we have few methods okay, for the separation of base flow. Well, the first is the straight line method that is mentioned over here. Like in this method, Separation is made by a straight line that joining at point A that is the initial point and then the point C that is the end point that is on the recession limb. 
okay so that end point and initial point would be joined and this method is simply known as the straight line method okay now if we discuss about the second method that is the two tangent method right in this method the base flow is separated from the direct runoff by two different lines the first line ab is obtained by extending the base flow curve existing prior to the commencement of the surface runoff till it intersects a vertical line that is drawn from the pick point d then point b and point c are joined by the straight line and the segment that is marked by these two lines line ab and bc demark it as the base flow and the direct runoff well to mark the point c or to locate the point c we have one uh, equation also that is n is equals to 0.825 into a is to 0.2 this n is nothing but the time interval in days from the peak hours and a is the drainage area that generally in the square kilometer now to find out the direct runoff from this hydrograph or we can say for the hydrographic analysis we have one formula to find out the direct runoff that is the 0.36 into sigma o into t upon a where this sigma o is the sum of direct runoff that ordinates are given uh, as a data and a is the area of basin and q is final discharge now if we discuss about the negative base flow method when the water level in the river is low before the occurrence of flood there is a flow from the ground water to the river okay but when the water level in the river rises due to the flood there is a flow of water from the river to the ground water and this is termed as the negative base flow well as the flood level in the river recedes the ground water again starts contributing to the river so as such the variation in the base flow is shown in this figure with the dotted line okay well in which the shaded portion that represent the negative base flow okay so a b c denotes the ground water line only if there were no flood okay now however the ground water contribution is is in small percentage of the total flow it is justified to consider the base flow as it can be uh, given by any of the separation method that is uh, Uh, straight line method or the two tangent method okay the flow about the line abc is due to the direct runoff that is that is this particular flow which is the direct runoff and bottom of that is generally known as the base flow okay so this was all about today's lecture i hope students you understand all the topics thoroughly Thank you so much for the kind attention. I will see you in the next lecture.